Live from San Jose, in the heart of Silicon Valley, it's theCUBE, covering DataWorks Summit 2017. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Welcome back to theCUBE. We are live at day two of the DataWorks Summit in the heart of Silicon Valley. We have been uh, learning a ton from lots of different people that have been on the show the last day and a half. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host George Gilbert and we are next joined by the Chief Product Officer of Pentaho, Donna Perlich. Welcome back to theCUBE, CUBE alumni. Thank you, thank you, it's great to be here. And you had a great keynote this morning that we had to miss because we were here. It's all right. Tell us about, <laughs> so one of, the, one of the really interesting things that you were talking about on your keynote was that a lot of machine generated data today mm -hmm. is not being fully exploited or used. Tell us about that. What opportunities are businesses missing and how does Pentaho help them capitalize and monetize that? Yeah, so it's true. You know, um, we're hearing so much about IoT and one of the things we've seen, and you know, we had a press release out the last couple days around the growth in bookings we've seen around customers who are um, leveraging machine generated data. Caterpillar and Beyondra and a couple others. And what we're seeing is that there's this major opportunity out there for um, organizations to get value from that data. But the most interesting thing that we're seeing in these use cases is the ability to bring all the work that we've done over the last few years, all of us, um, in big data. When that starts to come into the picture, that's where you really start to drive some interesting insights. And so the idea that that isn't being exploited is kind of like the next step up from big data and sort of what we're all going to pre prepare for here. But much like big data, we have to focus on what those business outcomes are uh, in order to achieve that, so. So it's really, the necessity is the convergence of big data with machine learning, IOT. Our customers, like you mentioned Caterpillar, for mm -hmm. example, give us an example of kind of where they were. Did they understand we've got tons of, of sensors out there, but we're, we're not able to kind of connect the dots. Where did they come to Pentaho for help yeah, to really so, maximize so, their investments? So Caterpillar um, Marine Asset was a customer of Pentaho's for a long time, and they leveraged our platform to um, collect the sensor data off of the ships at sea, and they managed sheet flips, sheet fleets of ships <laughs> um, for the U.S. Navy for many years. And, they always could do predictive maintenance. That was the thing they did really, really well. And so they captured that machine generated data, they'd take the operational data, data about parts, location data of where ships were, and they could say, okay, somebody shipped a part out to the ship out in the Indian Ocean so that it's not sitting out there. Um, and then what happened is, is, as that sensor data became more valuable, they said, gee, I wonder if we could look at maintenance costs. And they started to look at the fact that they were spending you know, pretty sizable amount of money on maintaining ships and cleaning the hulls twice a year. But what was interesting is once they took that sensor data and then brought in a lot of the other kind of big data about fuel consumption, um, the drag of the ship, propulsion, all this other data that we might think of as big data, they realized that they should actually, based on the barnacles that accumulate on the bottom of a boat, I've learned a lot about shipping, um, that they should be cleaning the hulls more often. And they saved themselves $10 million over two years for a fleet of eight ships. So if you do the math wow. to 2,000 ships, yeah. that's amazing, right. right? So that context of the big data is really what kind of drove those business outcomes that you know are obviously driving cost reduction and innovation and Who knew the barnacles rest. could influence big data outcomes? Well, <laughs> I know. It's, it's amazing, you know, and probably my terrible driving patterns can influence uh, mine too. Influence yeah. that as well. <laughs> Wow, that's incredible. So tell us, um, you've given us some interesting use cases. Tell us how being able to manage data coming in from the edge all the way to a business outcome, how that works, and, and why you have to have that span to make a big impact. Yeah, so a, a really um, key thing, and I mentioned this before, is focusing on a lot of the research says the winners will be those who focus on the business outcomes, much like the Warriors. You missed my presentation this morning, but we talked about the Warriors and the Cavs. Sorry, anybody who's a LeBron fan, but um, you know that the winners will be those that focus on those business outcomes. The losers will be those that just think about technology for technology's sake. And we saw that in the early days with Hadoop, a lot of science experiments, people fail. Why are we doing this? Um, and so when we look at IoT, if we think about the edge to the outcome, it sort of forces that the pieces that Pentaho's done really well over the years of 
the insights and the outcomes will drive what the business is going to see as the result. The edge piece is really interesting because not only will we have all the usual data sources and the big data, but we'll have to connect to those devices at the edge and we'll have to figure out how to register them and bring them into, stream them, or maybe in a micro batch way, bring them into that world of the rest of the data. So if you think about that as a continuum, it kind of forces the business outcome to be kind of front and center. And, and Hitachi is really where Pentaho kind of can extend our platform into that world of the edge to the outcomes. Maybe expand on that a little bit in terms of, you know, we've seen GE and IBM take slightly different um, approaches, but in the case of IBM, they take their, uh, the expertise that they gather from their customers in joint development and their own data science expertise and build these sort of rich models that then it sounds like you would deploy. Um, but with Hitachi, you're doing the same thing with Hitachi being a you know, $90 billion company, same size as IBM, you're complementing their data science um, chops and their domain expertise and building semi-custom, essentially, applications for other industrial companies. How does, how, tell us how, you know, how that makes a big impact and how that accelerates the process. Right, so um, if we think about what Hitachi brings to the table in that mix is they've got domain expertise and they've got you know, a lab here, for instance, right down the road that's got 50 data scientists. So in these early big data use cases that are really kind of transformative and then you need to have the domain expertise and the data science, Hitachi can bring that to the table, and then Pentaho brings all of the data orchestration and the, the orchestration of those machine learning models that get built for the business outcome. So we now have the edge to the outcome with Hitachi providing kind of that connected to the devices, registering, bringing them into the world of data, but now we also have the, the consulting expertise of Hitachi Labs to provide the actual domain expertise for the machine learning. Um, so we were talking earlier, it's like, you know, if you have a, a turbine, for instance, that's a very specific type of machine learning that has to get developed, and that's the thing that Hitachi can help us, and in the early use cases, we're learning so much, and they're learning so much, about how to help other customers, too. So it's a great combination. So one of the things that you mentioned was kind of what's happening now that's forcing the business outcomes to be front and center. One of the things yesterday that Rob Bearden announced when they were making the announcement about the IBM um, expansion mm -hmm. of their technology and strategic partnership is you know, the four meta trends, cloud, IOT, streaming data, and data science. So one of the things that's interesting is people say, well, it's as a company, whether it's um, you know, a traditional network trying to compete with a Netflix or a Hulu saying, we have to monetize our content. And today the conversation was really around we need to monetize the insights, the outcomes. So when you look at the role of the data scientists, which we've all know, there's not a ton of them, um, how do you guys help, you mentioned consulting, how does Pentaho perhaps help the business users kind of understand, all right, what outcomes would we want to see, what variables mm -hmm. would we want to examine since you're seeing now this forcing function of the business outcomes being kind of front and center. What's, what's that, um, conversation like? Yeah, so um, the data scientists obviously are, are very rare, right, and important resources. And so over the last couple of years, we've really been able to help with the preparation of data, which we all know is like 80% of the job. So removing that time to kind of get just the data alone prepared, and then actually to tune and test those models and make that iteration process faster. Pentaho can really help with that. And then the best part is, is once those are actually created and you've got all that value, you can simply bring those into those already existing transformation flows that you've built with Pentaho, and we can execute those models to achieve the business outcome. So we're definitely allowing you to have your resources that are focused on the really hard challenges to create the transformation. So whether it's predictive modeling or it's sentiment analysis, we're helping with that. And then when you execute those, obviously that's what drives that business outcome. Excellent. And when when is it appropriate to run the models? just within Pentaho or, or orchestrate you know, the, the predictions and prescriptions it provides, and when do you find the need to integrate them with existing applications 
to inform a system of record making a decision mm -hmm. in the form of a transaction. Right, well that's some of, um, today you know, we often do that. So the Caterpillar example I mentioned, um, IMS that does usage-based insurance, as I was mentioning about the bad driving, they take that telemetry data, they bring that together with customer data to be able to manage risk, retain customers, offer better, mm -hmm. um, uh, better policies, et cetera, to their customers. Um, those are, it, those are areas where Pentaho today, they simply create all their data transformations from the different data, data sources with Pentaho and then they execute those as part of those flows. Outside of that, if you think about IoT, I might want to actually kick off a process, right, and workflow integration. And so that's an area where we're working um, on the IoT side with Hitachi to extend that edge to outcome because we know that it's edge to outcome, but eventually the outcome needs to trigger that machine learning model to your point, George, and say, maybe I need to trigger my ERP system to, you know, say, send something out to this particular provider. Um, so that's where the work we're doing, I think, just to help with that initial orchestration and getting that value and then being able to integrate to, from that outcome back to the edge is where there's going to be a lot of value. And, and sort of where are you in that journey? Is it is it a, a technical immaturity at this point or is it more that the customers still need to um, sort of wrap their head around a, a new approach to thinking about closed loop analytics. Yeah, I think it's a little bit, I, I think it's mostly the latter, and what we've really found is what helps us to drive what to build is by kind of going at pace with the market and seeing what's coming and following the use cases, because the beginning is always so uncertain. I remember five years ago with big data, everybody's trying to figure out what are those patterns. Um, and so I think the closed loop piece, what we're seeing is a lot of the customers that we have, it's, they're not quite there yet, um, even with real time, some of it is kind of micro batch, some of it is batch. So it's it's really one of those things as the IoT kind of um, market matures, then I think we'll see that that orchestration technology um, improve, and and there'll be a lot that'll be it'll be open, right? A lot of it's going to depend on APIs from the edge from those devices. So still a lot to kind of shake out over the next few years, I think there. One of the things that you guys have just done is, is come out with, with a, a message about adaptive execution mm -hmm. as this world is obviously inherently complex. Kind of last question to you is, describe what uh, adaptive execution means in the context of some of your customers. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, adaptive execution, it really applies to what you just mentioned, George, about um, you know the closed loop and how are we going to get there. A lot of these things we honestly don't know until we see what emerges now and then we start to build for it and we look for those repeatable patterns. Adaptive execution was a similar one. There was a lot of excitement around Spark and around how are we going to create tools to do drag and drop and generate code and so developers can move faster because there's not enough resources. Adaptive execution, what that'll allow customers to do is say, you know what, I'm going to create this transformation once, but I might want to run it in Spark. I might want to run it in MapReduce. I might want to run it in whatever's coming down the path that we haven't seen seen next. I'm going to be able to balance the workload again to the business outcome I'm trying to achieve and preserve my resources. So adaptive execution for Pataho says, build the transformation once, build your data transformations once, and then execute them on whatever engine is appropriate for the workload. Um, and that's, you know, that's something that we're really excited about. Our customers are super excited about. That was a couple months ago we announced it and, um, you know, great, great, uh, feedback from our customers. Well, speaking of great feedback, thank you so much, Donna, for stopping by theCUBE and talking with us. We, What a great conversation. Barnacles, big data. <laughs> That's right. And from the edge to business outcomes. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining George and me. It's been great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And we should remind everyone that uh, we'll be at Pentaho World in, in a couple months. That's right. And so we'll have wall-to-wall -wall coverage of all the cool things you're doing. Pentaho World, October 25th. Don't miss it, Fantastic. Orlando, Florida. You There's heard my plug. it here. <laughs> All right. Well, for my co host, George Gilbert, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live from day two of the DataWorks Summit. Stick around, we've got great content coming right back at you.